What's up guys and welcome to PC Building Simulator. Now before you freak out, it's not a new series. So the purpose of this video is I have been getting more and more comments asking what do I use to record, what's my setup, what are all the parts that I have in my PC, which every item in my PC currently will be of course linked in the description of each video as long as it is gaming related. But in the past, I have done a, I guess, PC like setup tour overview type thing. So rather than literally remaking the same video, I thought maybe it'd be a good time to break out the old PC building simulator and literally yes I know this is a real thing it might be a shock to some of you you can actually build a PC virtually on your PC it's very weird total PC section but I thought maybe we switch it up and uh, and just try to build my exact PC in PC building simulator so that's exactly what we're going to do today now to get started here we're gonna have to go over to our inventory under cases and we're gonna have to get the fractal Meshify C Dark, I believe is what it's called. So we have the Meshify C TG, and then we have the Meshify Dark TG. Honestly, I have no idea what the difference in these two actually is, but I'm gonna go with the Dark TG. So now that we have our case, let's come over to our workbench here. We'll place it down. First step is of course removing the front glass panel, and we're gonna remove the back metal panel as well. Now, when you do buy a case, there's a good chance it's probably gonna come with some fans. Now, they're not necessarily the best fans in the world. For example, I definitely did rip the initial case fans out and replace them with some Corsair RGB fans just because, you know, who doesn't want some lights in their gaming PC? That's kind of like the thing to do. Now we're gonna have to remove the PSU mount. All right, we're looking good. Everything is uh, pretty well stripped down to a bare shell. We may have to remove the dust filter on the top there as well. So with that done, I think we can start installing some stuff. Now the first thing you're wanna gonna, you're wanna gonna do. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a long, long recording. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is of course, get in your motherboard. I have a Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi. Maybe not this exact one, but it's the only one that I could find that actually looks similar to what's in my computer. So now that we have that, we're just gonna bolt that in. You gotta put the rivets in and then put the screws inside the rivets. Now that we have the motherboard installed, you could move on to the CPU. However, I think I'm gonna actually move on to the case fans. And once again, I do have the Corsair fans in here. I want to say it's these, but it could also be these down here. I really don't know what the difference is on them. I think mine are more translucent all the way around, more like this. Now don't be weirded out if I have to like keep looking over at my computer. I built it a very, very long time ago. I really don't remember the specs on it. That's why it's all linked in the description. But I know I have two of these 140s. So we'll get one put there, another one just on top of it. Yeah, that looks right anyways. I don't know, I could be wrong. And then I have three of these 120s. So we have one for an exhaust fan right here, and then we also have two 120s for exhaust fans on the top. Whether or not the game actually registers it to be an intake or an exhaust fan, I don't really know, but I'm just doing exactly what I have next to me. And with that done, it may be a good time to remove the PCI fan fin things. I don't know what they're called, guys. And the reason we wanna remove those is so we can fit our graphics card. Now I have a 1070 Ti, which I don't think the exact one that I have is actually in the game, but we can get it pretty close. This is 1070 No Ti Founders Edition NVIDIA. I do have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I'm gonna use the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 Ti Founders Edition. That is quite a mouthful, but we're gonna get that installed right there. It looks similar. Now, I definitely don't have the Founders Edition, but based on the specs and the performance of this graphics card, it is virtually the same as what I have. Now we're gonna move on to the CPUs. So I do use AMD. I have an AMD motherboard. Uh, it's the, the chipset in it is specific to AMD. So I have the AMD Ryzen 7. I used to have a Ryzen 5 and it served me really well until I basically exploded the thing. So I upgraded to a Ryzen 7 3800X. We're gonna get that put in right there. Now we can close the little latch on it. This basically just locks your um, chipset into place. Now a very important step 
Something that I missed when I first built my PC and the reason that my original CPU kind of exploded is I didn't really apply thermal paste very well. The AMD CPUs do typically come with thermal paste already applied to either it or the, uh, the CPU cooling mechanism fan thing that you mount on top of it, which mine did. It was applied to it. However, I actually switched CPU cooling fans mid-use and didn't reapply thermal paste, and then it kind of overheated and uh, bit the dust. So very important step there, either apply or reapply thermal paste depending on your installation. Moving on to CPU coolers, once again, like I said, the AMD chipsets do come with their own CPU cooling fan. However, that's not the case in this game. So I'm just gonna look for something similar to what I have. They're probably not gonna have the exact one, of course. Doesn't really look like they have anything remotely similar aside from this 40 CFM. I think it's 66 millimeters in height. I can't remember the specs. It's called the, uh, it's, it's from AMD, of course. It comes with a chipset. It's the Wraith CPU cooler. I want to say this is going to be close enough, so we're just going to run with that. It is RGB, which, you know, matches. I think I may have skipped a very important step. A very, very important step. We're going to go ahead and remove the CPU cooler that we just put on. We're going to reapply our thermal paste because that fan is so big, we were never going to be able to put in our, our, our memory into the computer. So let's move to memory here. We need 3200 megahertz. I have two G-Skill Rip Jaws 8 gigabytes at 3200. The reason I did 3200 is because the motherboard actually maxes out at 3200. It would be kind of a waste to put a higher megahertz memory stick in the computer if you can't actually utilize it. So I went with 3200, but I have one here and I have another one in the third slot. Now I don't know if it's going to do this, but I did buy my RAM sticks, memory sticks, whatever you want to call them at separate times. So originally I had 16 gigabytes, that'd be two eights. But later on, I did upgrade to these Tridents. Those are 16s though. Do they have Tridents in an eight? They do right here. DDR4, 3200, RGB, Trident Z. That is perfect. So I did add two of these to my arsenal. So that goes in the second slot there. And then another one we will put in the fourth slot right there. So only two of my RAM sticks, memory sticks, again, whatever you want to call them, are RGB, which is fine. You don't really have to have a computer with a bunch of RGB stuff in it. You could just have RGB fans and call it a day. Now back to the CPU cooling. I'm gonna try to find that same fan that I had initially. Actually, this one almost looks closer. It is enormous though. Okay, yep, way too big, way too big. We're not installing this one. <laughs> that looks ridiculous. Now, of course, we have to reapply our thermal paste again. Otherwise, this thing will overheat. Here we go, let's grab our fan again. And it wants us to remove the RAM sticks. So we're not gonna be able to use that, I guess. That's just not gonna fit. We're gonna have to get a much smaller version version of that. This kind of looks close. 50 CFM, 112 millimeters of height. God, that's huge, dude. Why are they so big? Why are they so big? I don't understand. You know what? Actually, looking at that, it is not RGB, of course, but with the, the copper piping coming off of the heat displacement thing, it, it's like a radiator for a car, but it's not. It doesn't have any liquid in it. Heat sink. That's what it's called. Heat sink. It's a bit large, but it'll do. I mean, that's, that's basically what I have. And now moving on to storage. I actually have just one storage device on my computer. It is a one terabyte M.2. I believe this is the only one terabyte M.2. Yes, it is quite literally the only one that is one terabyte. So we are gonna use the a Data XPG SX6000 M.2 one terabyte storage drive here. And this can either go underneath of your GPU or sometimes there's another slot. What the heck, dude? What the heck? It still wants us to remove? Are you kidding me? All right, either way, it's gonna want us to remove our uh, GPU here. So let's just go ahead and unplug that, rip that sucker out of there, and we'll put in our M.2. I have mine underneath of the GPU. 
probably not the best spot to put it, but it does have its own separate heatsink that goes over top of it before you put the GPU on. So odds of it overheating are slim to none. Let's grab our 1070 Ti again. So mine actually has three fans kind of like this, but spec wise, like core frequency, memory frequency, it is neither of those two. So we're just gonna go with the 1070 Ti Founders Edition from Nvidia. Looks good. All right, dude, what else are we missing? Power supply, that's a very, very important thing. Power supplies don't really matter, to be honest, as long as you have the correct wattage that your computer is going to need. I have a Corsair TX650M in my computer currently, so that's what I'm gonna install here. Being in free build mode, it's going to do all of the cables for you. When I purchased my power supply, it actually came with a bunch of cables and they're very, very ugly. Cable management, not exactly my forte. I don't care too much, but I know every person I've ever had like come over and look at my PC. A lot of my friends that are really big into building PCs kind of shun it a little bit because the cable management is so terrible. So I'm not gonna worry about it. It runs just fine, it works great. Now aside from that, I think we're about done. So the next step under PC parts, this is everything that we took off of it. We're gonna have to get our power supply bracket put back on there, unplug the power supply here really quick so we can get that mounted up. There we go. And next, we're gonna have to put on our dust filter on the top. That thing always, 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 always has dust in it and the front one too, but that's what I get. I do have it up on a table, so it's better than being on the ground. Originally, I had this thing sitting on the floor and it was just sucking up dog hair left and right. So that problem has been fixed. I bought a little table for it and there we go. So now come over to our handy dandy computer screen here. The first thing I'm gonna do is of course, it in the BIOS here. I don't have my CPU overclocked because I cannot afford to replace it if I do blow it up. So the only thing I did on mine is actually turn on what's called XMP. Basically what that does is automatically overclocks your RAM to the maximum megahertz that your motherboard will actually take or give out, I guess. So that being 3200, again, why we chose the 3200 megahertz RAM sticks and boot device is of course the only storage device that I have in the computer being the M.2 will apply the changes and restart the PC. Now what I want to do, I have done 3D mark benchmarking before on this computer. I want to see now that I've basically reconstructed it virtually in PC building simulator, I want to see how close the benchmark numbers are. Ooh, error. <laughs> no OS found. Okay. You'd think that'd be a problem, but I do actually have a Windows 10 put on a little flash drive, so we're just gonna go ahead, plug that into back there. There we go. Turn her off, turn her back on. We'll reboot the system so it actually has an OS to pull off the flash drive, that being the Omega system here. Now, we're gonna add and remove some programs. The only really important one that I'm gonna be doing is the 3D Mark. Uh, benchmarking software, so we're gonna add that, and then we're going to add the lighting software as well. We'll go ahead and restart one more time. All right, here we are. So, for the Corsair HD RGB, I think, I think I have everything kind of alternating right now, so I'm just gonna select all the lights. We're gonna go to rainbow, set the speed down to low, time offset maxed out. Now that's gonna change all of them so they will alternate in a rainbow pattern. Just so you guys can see that, I'll go ahead and focus in on the PC one more time. And that's actually, that's really weird. That That's exactly what it looks like, like to a T. Very cool. You can't see my RGB memory sticks very well just because of the CPU cooler that I chose was way too big, but that's all right. Now we're gonna open up 3D Mark. What this is gonna do is basically run a, I would call it a game. I don't know if this is a legitimate game or not, but it's going to benchmark it based off of your CPU. CPU processes and your GPU processes and just make sure that everything is tip top, your frame rate is good, all sorts of, you know, nerdy stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and let this run through, get the final number, and uh, we'll compare it to what my actual 3D Mark benchmarking results were. Also, 
If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to know that a good handful of you, regardless of the type of content that's being put out on the channel, you're still gonna click on it, you're still gonna watch it, and I do very greatly appreciate you doing that. All right, the results are in. Let me take a sip of my not a sponsor V8 energy juice each mango thing. Okay, 6745. Now I don't know if this is based on running at 1080p or if it's running 4K, but I do have the results on my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look at those really quick. So I have the results for 1080p on the 3800X. I also have them for the 2600X, the original CPU that I blew up. Hey, that doesn't look good. So I guess since I haven't actually opened up 3D Mark in such a long time that it's outdated now, so I can't open up those files, but just bear with me a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and update it and we'll check out what those files were. All right, 1080p, 3800X, what do we got? We have a benchmark of 6712, you guys. 6712. This was a 6745 in-game, so it is a little bit better in the game but that could just be because of the cooler difference. I'm not really sure. Graphics score 6380. Let's check what the actual test was. 6329, so lower there. Again, that could just be because of the GPU that I used isn't exactly what I have in my computer, but it's dang close. CPU score 10,224, and CPU score in-game is 9,983. So it really does sort of equal out in between the graphics score versus the CPU score. I'm super surprised with that. Super, super surprised that the game is almost, uh, granted, again, the components are not all exactly the same, but it is almost spot on with my actual results. I want to check my 3800X in 4K results, and we'll see if that is similar or worse. Okay, much worse. That's only a 3000, and that's why I don't record in 4K. Also, editing files in 4K, complete disaster. Highly don't recommend doing that ever. Unless your PC is just an absolute unit, then have at it. And then let's open up one last one here. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. You'll just kind of have to take my word for it. I want to open up 1080p on my old CPU, my old chipset, the 2600X Ryzen 5. Let's open that up and see what the results were for that. 6611 overall score and a 6745 in-game with the upgraded CPU. So CPU score definitely went up, but it really didn't help the overall score all that much, 100 points or something like that. But man, that is the coolest, the coolest thing. I don't know why I didn't make this video sooner. I it just kind of popped in my head this morning. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Nobody asked for it, <laughs> but I'm gonna do it anyways. So uh, I do think that is going to uh, finish things off for this episode of PC Building Simulator. If you guys do want to see me play through the uh, the career mode in this game, I would be happy to do that. It's, uh, it's a very easy game to just pick up and record. I think with that, I'm just gonna wind things down here. So if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, to help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.